Um, within three months of the diagnosis, I had a cardiac event. I had a heart attack. Individuals whom I spoke to about coming to Serbia for treatment of stem cells, like, Serbia? Stem cells? No, I wouldn't go. If the traditional approach is not working, common sense tells us that we should try to explore other options. And if the other options are there, and the treatment options are available to you, why not explore them? My expectation is that it's going to work. And like I said, I'm not going to use just one approach. I'm going to be using a multiplicity of approach to try to address that. The decision that I have made is to cure myself from diabetes, come off uh, all types of medications once and for all. I get in here about six o'clock and when I went downstairs, the people in the restaurant already knew my name. So it makes you feel at home, a sort of welcome that is not normally extended to strangers, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all in all, I have had a wonderful experience here. Hello, Mr. Harris. Hey, good uh, Wonderful mm -hmm. to have you here. Yeah, uh, you. Can you please introduce to our public yourself and uh, tell us what brought you to Swiss Medica? Okay, well, uh, my name is Harris Philip. In fact, I'm a medical doctor, a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. I've been in practice for over 31 years. I was first diagnosed with um, diabetes in March of 2016. Um, by then, I wasn't aware as to how long I was having diabetes for. But what I do know is that I have a strong family history of diabetes and I had started seeing signs to suggest that I was developing diabetes, frequent urination in the night and stuff like that. So I went for a checkup with my GP and he diagnosed diabetes. Um, within three months of the diagnosis, I had a cardiac event. I had a heart attack. So it was a bit disturbing for me because I was the only member of my family who ever had cardiac issues. Mm -hmm. So um, I was a little nervous because your heart and so on. But anyway, the date happened, it was a Sunday. Um, that Saturday I was at work. The Sunday I drove about 50 odd miles to, go, uh, to another location. But during that time I was having some chest pains. At the time I was putting it off to trapped wind because I was at work on Saturday so I skipped my lunch, so I thought it was trapped wind. Um, anyway, the pains did not go away. It's straight of what I did, take anti um, platelet medication, it did not go away. And then it started rising through my neck, you know, and then I started having some toothache. Mm -hmm. Then it started rolling, um, radiating down to my left arm. So at that point, I was with a, a guy who was going to do some building for me. So um, he suggested that we go out to buy, buy out the equipment that we needed to um, do the building. So we went out, but while in the store, in the hardware store, trying to get the equipment, I found that I didn't have any energy. So I leaned up against the wall and I started sweating. So he said to me, hey, what's wrong with him? And I said, well, I'm not normally like that. I just don't know what's happening, but I do have some chest pains and stuff. He said, man, you know, careful. I hope it's not a heart attack. I said, it sounds like that, you know, but I, want, I don't want to believe it. Anyway, he said, well, why don't go, let's just go and have a checkup at the same time. So I drove myself from where we were about 10 miles to a um, healthcare facility where they did some bloods on me and did some tests, a CT, ECG and um, some bloods were taken and they kept me in overnight and the diagnosis was made of a myocardial event or heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, the very night, the doctors on call wanted to operate on me. I told them, no, that was a Sunday night. I told them, no, because they won't call for all weekend. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, uh -uh, I'm not doing that, you know? So they said, okay, we could put you on the list for tomorrow morning, that's Monday. So I said, okay, I will go in on Monday and do it. I was the first patient on the list on the Monday morning. I went in for um, a, a stent, placement of a stent. The person next in line on that very list, the second person on that list, because it was the first, the second person on the list, did not make it. Mm -hmm. She passed on the table. So I don't know if that was an indication or a sign, but I told my, I considered myself lucky. And since then, I had been exploring ways in which I could improve my health overall. My intention was to beat diabetes, get up all the medications. You know, so I've been juggling medications, juggling lifestyle changes and so on, hoping to come to some resolution in terms of curing myself. So far, I haven't had much success. I have developed a formula which I thought I could use. We talk about the triple M approach. Muscles, that's what you eat, the size of your portions. 
um, activity, movement. I'm doing more exercises. I have joined gyms. I've been working out and stuff like that. And management of stress because an, as an obstetrician, it's a high stress position um, job. So I was thinking if I was able to control those three, I should be in a better position to cure my diabetes. So then I went online doing some searches. What else is there? What else is there to be known? Um, prior to all of this happening, though, I did a master's degree in law, mm -hmm. and my thesis was stem cells, the ethical and legal implications of its use. So I was of the opinion, based on my background search and stuff, that stem cell could offer, offer an answer towards curing this disease condition. So um, I started searching online for clinics with experience, not anybody, any clinic, clinics with experience treating stem cells uh, using stem cells to treat diabetes and so on. So then I eventually ended up, just by chance, on this clinic. So I contacted them and asked them about their you know, experience in dealing with people with diabetes and what are their success rates and so on. So they gave me some figures and with time, because this has been going on from about March of this year, I've been in touch with them back and forth, back and forth. So I get to learn a little bit about the clinic. So that was one of the driving forces to bring me here. You know, and since I've been here, the reception has been welcoming. <laughs> I can't say anything negative about the reception here. The people from the first night I came, well, even before I came, the communication online was, you know, something that you really, you know, kind of thing. It's like you're taken aback when you hear the exchanges and how accommodating the exchanges were. Before I came, actually, I got an email giving me the names. Of individuals whom I should be looking forward to meet. I was told about anesthesia and she would be in charge of my day to day in terms of the medical plan for my care. I was told about um, individuals involved in the traveling and stuff like that. So I was well informed when I came in. When I came, I met anesthesia and she was a welcoming presence, you know, with a person you can easy to communicate with. She's easy to talk to. Then that was just like the preamble. Then I got to meet the physiotherapist, and I cannot say anything bad about the physiotherapist. They were they're exceptionally pleasant people, you know, and they're actually a credit to the unit, you know, in terms of their care, the concern, the enthusiasm, and the happiness that they deliver when they're performing the task. It's just a welcoming experience. The girls in the kitchen were also very, very welcoming. You go to them, you tell them anything food-related, and... They're accommodating. They'll bend backwards to try to accommodate you, make sure you're comfortable. You know? So all in all, the experience here has been fantastic. Even the girls in the procedure room, the clinics, the persons who said the, the event plan yes. and so on, yeah. those individuals have been very caring. You know? And the fact that they recognize an individual by name. Mm -hmm. You know, because when somebody calls your name, you say, hey. I just came here, how you, knew, how you know who I am? You know? In fact, the first night I came, I went downstairs to get dinner. I get in here about 6 o'clock. And when I went downstairs, the people in the restaurant already knew my name. You know, and I said, oh, you know. So it makes you feel at home, a sort of welcome that is not normally extended to strangers, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So all in all, my experience here has been welcoming. I got treated, um, and I am hoping to get some positive results. My doctor has been exceptional. Dr. Anna, she has been exceptional. We have developed a good rapport. So much so that we talk about my conditions, my expectations, the treatment that she's offering, and the sort of effect that I should, see, I should see. She's also opening the opportunity for me to come back for a checkup, which I think is welcoming. Yeah, so all in all, I have had a wonderful experience here. Thank you so much for sharing that part uh, regarding your experience and uh, that we met your expectations, if I may say. Um, can I just go back a little bit uh, on the topic of stem cells? Um, did you discuss the idea of receiving relatively new treatment e mm -hmm. with your primary doctor, with your GP uh, in, uh, in the UK? Well, as you know, well, as, as you said, mm -hmm. um, stem cell treatment is experimental. So the GPs are custodians of, 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 of um, traditional medicine. So they wouldn't look at experimental treatment and endorse it. Okay? They'll more work through the pharmacotherapeutic pathway. Or if you have this, we'll treat you with that. You know? In my case, I 
have done a fair amount of work looking into diabetes. In fact, I have a book on diabetes. And what we find is that the incidence of diabetes is something to rise. In fact, it is said that the incidence of diabetes will increase by 2% every year from, um, from 2020 right on to 20, about 2035. Um, in January of this year, the incidence of diabetes in the UK was like 4.3 million. By December of this very year, an ex additional 86,000 people will be diagnosed. So when you are uh, uh, faced with a chronic con condition and you realize that the medical establishment, all they do is try to treat the condition. They not really, they not really trying to cure it. Okay, you you say to yourself, well, probably I'm not going along the right pathway. You realize, for example, one of the common uh, medications they use for diabetic is insulin, and that is not correct treatment. You know because it causes your vas vascular damage and stuff like that, and they know it. So you question, why are we knowing that something is not functional in terms of trying to cure but yet to give it to, uh, to to clients? So recognizing this, I had to start to move away from traditional medicine. Recognizing that there's a role for traditional medicine, but also if you could um, employ or think of or explore other treatment options, then the pathway going forward may look more logical. So in my case now, what I'm trying to do in terms of curing my diabetes is to use a sort of holistic approach, combine the traditional approach with um, newer Excellent. methods. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what I try to do now. So besides um, medicine and of course insulin, I suppose, what, did you try any kind of other treatments to address the issue with... Uh... Yes, well we have tried metformin, I've tried a range of drugs, metformin, um, glibicide, which is a um, glycosuria, and you know, so it tells me it, what I'm doing is really just symptomatic treatment. It doesn't really address the cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do with these new approaches, new techniques, is to use a combination approach. Because in addition to the stem cell treatment, I've also um, recognized the role played by GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic and so on from the US. And seeing if in combination of that and stem cells, if I could... Um, finally win the fight against diabetes and uh, if i may ask uh, while you were doing your research about stem cells mm -hmm. you probably stumbled upon a few other clinics as well mm -hmm. besides swiss medica uh, if you would have to point one key factor that mm, that was decisive in in making your choice to go with swiss medica what would that be why did you decide to to come for treatment here well, initially, I, I'll tell you up front, individuals whom I spoke to about coming to Serbia for treatment of stem cells, like, Serbia? Stem cells? No, I wouldn't go. You know, that's basically what they were saying. But then I did a little background search on your unit and recognized that there's some experience, you know. You don't want to start working with an experimental treatment option where there is no experience, you know. So since that this unit has been doing this for some time and they have evidence to show that they expect about at least a 60% improvement or cure, then that in itself, plus the reception and the type, the personalities, you know, the environment, the culture of the unit from what I could glean from my research was what was most attractive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. And one last thing that we always like to ask for people suffering with or struggling with similar condition, mm -hmm. would you have any kind of advice or an insight that you would like to share? Yes, well, to answer that question, I cannot really say that it's going to work for me because there's not much time. I have been on treatment now for five days with stem cells, so I cannot say it's going to work. If I was spoken to ask that question, say, in three, six months' time, I would say, yes, there has been obvious symptomatic improvement, if there has been. If there's none, of course, I'll say there's none. So my expectation is that it's going to work. And like I said, I'm not going to use just one approach. I'm going to be using a multiplicity of approach to try to address that. 
you know i mentioned earlier the three m approach um and the additional pharmacotherapy i'm using plus the stem cells so it's a number of different options because the options for me or the decision that i've made is to cure myself from diabetes come off uh, all types of medications once and for all so one of the conclusions that can be drawn by our viewers is that maybe they should look uh, to be optimistic as you are and to try holistic approach to try many many other a traditional and experimental uh, approaches to to address their health issues. Well, of course, because what you find is that in diabetes, for example, insulin has been around for years, you know, and... From the early 20th century. Yeah, and now we are here, and it's not... The, the, the incidence of diabetes, like I said earlier, is increasing, so the trajectory is upwards. So obviously what we're doing is not working. So it's high time that if the traditional approach is not working, common sense tells us that we should try to explore other options. And if the other options are there and the treatment options are available to you, why not explore them? So that is my position on it. If this clinic can continue to build its name, build its experience with managing diabetic patients, then that's probably the way to go.